welcome to a glittering Parramatta Stadium in the west of Sydney as we welcome you all for the beginning of this historic series between the Oli Roos, the Australian Olympic team and the Brazilian Olympic team. Of course, it's a three-match series which will culminate in the city of Perth next weekend. And of course, the, the team that uh, wins two games or draws one and, and wins two wins the tournament. So, uh, and there is a trophy for it, by the way. Important, uh, an important series because both teams are very keen on getting amongst the medals in the year 2000. Desperately important for a Brazil who has never won Olympic gold. Uh, immense soccer anyway. And uh, so it's very, very important to them. It's just about the only trophy they've never won. Joining me here tonight, Johnny Warren, who was instrumental in setting up the series, and Nick Theodorakopoulos, the coach of Wollongong. Johnny, a very important tournament for both teams. And we're, uh, we're expecting some uh, very bright and entertaining football. There's, uh, the Olympics just a little over two years away, so it goes without saying that the, our team has been underdone so far and it makes this series even more important for them. For Brazil, as you mentioned in the intro, never won gold at the Olympics. They are here to see the facilities, to do a lot of uh, experiments on time differences and training facilities and whatever else. Plus they have a very fine team, as all Brazilian teams are. Nick, uh, uh, the Australian team is uh, full of talent. Uh, you know some of them. I know you've been keeping an eye on some of them, in fact. Uh, how do you size them up? Well, I was lucky enough to be in camp in Albury, Liz, and, and I rate players uh, of the calibre of Brett Emerton, Bill Damianos and Vinny Grella. We've got such a very good central midfield, and I think that could be the, uh, the positions of key where the games could be won and lost. OK, and uh, what about the, uh, the boys back from overseas? Rizzo, uh, Milosevic, Bove? Yeah, Nick Rizzo, as we know, um, has cracked the big time uh, for Liverpool in England, so we'll be... We'll be uh, keen to see him, and I know the Australian public hasn't, hasn't seen Nick Rizzo, so I'm sure we'll be watching closely. Milosevic, we knew he had a good stint with Canberra Cosmos before he went overseas, so he looks safe at the back as well. And let's not forget Ralph Bove, he's been playing in Holland, so he has the necessary experience at the sweeper position to, All to right. pull through. All right, Nick, thank you. We'll uh, discuss more of the uh, star, star performers of these Australian team in a moment, but first, let's go to Kyle Patterson on the sidelines. Thanks, Les. Well, a little bit of a sound problem there. I'm now with you, but a wonderful atmosphere building here down at ground level. The Aussie, Aussie chant now going round, and of course that infectious beat from the Brazilian percussion, the drums, really filtering around the whole stadium. The weather is almost perfect for the game. It was very hot today in Sydney, upwards of 30 degrees. It's now cooled down quite substantially. A nice breeze has come in, say 21, 22 degrees, so no problems there for the players. Except one bad news story for Australia. Archie Thompson, the 19-year-old from the Gippsland Falcons, has had to pull out of the team a very late withdrawal. A late injury caused him to drop out today. He took a knock in training on Wednesday, trained here yesterday to try and do a fitness test. Unfortunately, didn't come up. He will lose his place and take no part tonight. Clayton Zane, the big striker from the Newcastle Breakers, comes in to the starting 11. That's the news down here for now. I'll be keeping in touch with all the news during the night. For now, back to you. All right, Carl, thanks very much. Well, Carl, just uh, uh, letting us know on what the, what the team lineup is. And uh, let's look at some of the stars of this Australian team. Firstly, uh, John Brett Emerton, uh, Sydney Olympic, and uh, a real star of the future. And, uh, and now the captain of the Sydney 2000 team, Brett Emerton, outstanding player, outstanding club form at the moment. And the type of play epitomises, I believe, the Australian sporting spirit. Just gives it all, has a, a huge amount of skill and a very influential player. Nick, Bill Damianos. Bill Damianos, uh, obviously playing in midfield for, for South Melbourne, who are on top of the league, and I think it, it stands alone that he's been one of the true performers for South Melbourne. And of course, Danny Milosevic, who's now playing professional football in Germany. Yes, as I said earlier, a key, and I think for any successful uh, national side, we, they must have a very good keeper, and I think Milosevic is up to scratch. OK, John, the Brazilians will be playing with this uh, normal formation of theirs with the uh, sweeper in front of the back two and and uh, raiding fullbacks from the, uh, on the right and left uh, what's the best way to play against them <laughs> with difficulty <laughs> <Forget it. laughs> i mean the problem playing brazil is their skill level is so high that they keep possession for so long that you have to play a very good game without the ball very good discipline and uh, the two the, the key players in their system are the number five you mentioned is the sweeper in front he is the captain and the other one, the key player, is the number 10, 
uh, Fernando, who, who is the goal scorer as well. Nick, I'm, I'm sure you've been a, an admirer of Brazilian football for a long time, as we all have. And I, I just want to say a few words about to anybody who's been doubting uh, this Brazilian team. Who are the stars? Who are the names? They're not here. I mean, we don't know who the names are of Brazilian teams. Romario came in 88, and everybody said, who's Romario? Sure. So, uh, your assessment of uh, Australia's opponents tonight? Well, obviously I don't know too much about them, but I'm sure after tonight we'll form... And you know enough about Brazilian football? Well, we know enough about Brazilian football at senior level and obviously at under-20 level. A lot of the players that played in the under-20 tournament in Malaysia aren't here, but as... as um, Johnny Warren said Fernando is a player that, um, that stands out and obviously uh, Ferrugan, the number five, who plays just in, that, in front of those back four, I think will be players to watch. John, let's go back to the SPS Youth Challenge 1992 when of course we brought the Brazilian team out here preparing for the World Youth Championship. They went on to win the World Youth Championship four months later uh, and you were very closely acquainted with uh, Julio Leal, their coach and the players. How important was that Australian tournament, the SBS Youth Challenge, in the preparation of their team for, for, well, the, for the big it was, one? It was crucial to them winning uh, the World Youth. They, are, they were the first team to arrive. They operated on the principle of one, uh, for the hour time difference, you need one day to acclimatise. And the problem for Brazil, I believe, tonight will be that it's 11 hours time difference. And their boys will be a little bit tired, I believe. But that was one thing that they picked up. But it was vital to them winning it in a sport where so little is in it, not often the best wins, any little advantage you can get in terms of preparation is vital and Brazil did that. Nick, uh, the fact that Harry Kuehl is not here, a lot has been made of that, but in a sense that'll be a good thing for the other players, won't it? Because it'll be, it'll be, it, it means that the focus will be back on them, they will have a chance to, to be the shining stars rather than Harry. It's obviously, it's obviously a chance for them, Les. As we can see, I said it, obviously it's a chance for them to prove that they're good enough to make the 2000 squad. And with players of the calibre of having Harry Kill, who will come back and play, it's important for people like Zane, Archie Thompson, as well as Nick Carl, to prove their ability to be able to make the final squad. All right, well, the young warriors are entering the arena, as you can see. Australia wearing their normal colours of yellow shirts. The Brazilians in a chain strip of blue shirts, holding hands, as is the tradition of the Brazilian team. There are some stars on that green turf tonight that you're going to be enjoying coming to fruition over the next few years. It's Brazil versus Australia in the first of a three-match series, the Oliru Challenge. And uh, we stand by now for the national anthem, and after those, our commentators will be Paul Williams and Johnny Wong.
Australia's quest for an Olympic medal begins tonight at Parramatta, just a few short kilometres away from the Olympic venue at Homebush. Good evening, everyone around Australia. Welcome to the west of Sydney. It's been a magnificent afternoon in Sydney, 35 degrees plus today, and a balmy night for a great occasion. The Australian lineup, youth team captain Danny Milosevic got the nod in goal. Con Vlatsis and Simon Colosimo will be the markers in defence, with Ralph Bove sweeping behind. Brett Emerton has been named as the captain. He'll play wide on the right. Jacob Burns has a similar role on the left. Vince Grella, Bill Damianos and Nick Rizzo provide a very talented trio in midfield, with 16-year-old Nick Carl and Newcastle's Clayton Zane hoping to be amongst the goals as the two attackers. For Brazil, well, typically they have utilised the numbers 1 to 11, suggesting a real clarity of thought from the coach. Ferrogem will operate just in front of the back four, a crucial role in the Brazilians' tactics. Fernando also is expected to shine in the number 10 jersey, quickly supporting Marco Antonio in attack. In goal, Fabio is rated as one of the best in the world for his age. Matazalem was outstanding at last year's Under-17 World Cup. He plays on the left-hand side of midfield. And it's a very healthy crowd in at Parramatta tonight as well. Estimated at a high teens, perhaps 18 or 19,000. And the referee for this evening, a great night for him as well. The Sydney sider, Simon Mikalev, with the respective captains, Federer for Brazil, the number five, and Brett Emerton, whose season has been quite a phenomenon. The UTS Olympic player was disappointed early on at the start of the year that a transfer to French club Bordeaux didn't turn out. But he stayed in Australia, he's represented the Socceroos in a full international, and now he's captain of the Olympic team, still just 19 years of age. <laughs> Terrific stuff for him, as it looks like Brazil to kick off playing in their away strip, of course, because Australia and Brazil have the same national team colours for their football teams. So Brazil in the blue and white, Australia naturally in the green and gold. Well, the biggest soccer crowd ever at Parramatta Stadium was 26,500 at the 1990 Ellison NSL Grand Final between Sydney Olympic and Marconi, two Sydney clubs. We won't match that tonight, but there is a terrific atmosphere in here already with the Brazilian drums, the Brazilian supporters, mixed with the Australians, of course. Australia versus Brazil, it's a matchup that we can never really see too often. Recent opponents, of course, twice in fact, at senior level in the Confederation Cup in Saudi Arabia, but only once before at Olympic level, back in 1988 in Seoul, when Brazil beat Australia by three goals to nil. There was Jem with an early touch as the captain. Roberto, the number eight. No doubt some of these names are a little unfamiliar to many of our audience tonight, but over the next week or so, we will have the great pleasure of getting to know them just a little bit better. And I know my co-commentator, Johnny Warren, is very much looking forward to the three-match series. Very much, so. I was saying in the preview there, uh, Paul, that this, the, the word Brazil just gets the adrenaline going. It's a huge occasion for our boys and also for Brazil. Very slow start at the moment by Brazil, slow in terms of just keeping the ball, just getting a, a touch. They have only arrived last Wednesday. They have been feeling the, the effects of the travel, as in fact have the overseas Aussie boys. An early break for Australia down the left-hand side. The ball coming across, it's cleared convincingly. Now the captain comes for Brazil. The whistle's gone. So has his arm raised. Number seven for Brazil, Luis Claudio, was offside. Bobe is the sweeper tonight for Australia. Back from his Dutch club, Herenveen. A perfect example of just how quickly a young player's career can take off. He was in and out of UTS Olympic side for the last half of last season. Now he's a full-time professional at the Dutch club. From being a part-time player and part-time student to a full career in football. 
all of these Brazilian players are linked to major clubs in Brazil, and that's offside. Second time in the game. Here's Claudio again. The great things about football at the Olympic level as we see the respective coaches there, Les Schreinflug and Raul Blanco of Australia. It's the variety of ages that can play in an Olympic team. Australia's youngest is Nick Carl leading the attack tonight at 16. Right through to Clayton Zane at 20. Ralph Bobe, who's just 21. That's a foul. Brazil have a decision in their favour. Foul coming in from Simon Colosimo, the Carlton player. Rodrigo. Minos in the air. Clayton Zane. A reprieve for Clayton Zane tonight. Archie Thompson, the Gippsland strikers. The Gippsland Falcon striker, rather, was expected to start an attack along with Nick Carl, but. 3 2 Archie Thompson. Frustration for him. Clayton Zane got the nod instead. Matos Allen for Brazil. Tangle on the edge of the penalty area there. Which way will the decision go? It goes in favour of Australia, right on the corner of the box there. Zane tangling with the number four, Rodrigo. Just outside the area. And an early chance for the Oli Roos to show what they're made of here at home. Nick Rizzo over the ball. Building it with the left foot, loose ball here, chance for Australia at the back post, shot comes in, it's blocked, and away by Brazil. Well, an ounce of luck there, and Australia would have taken the lead, because the ball ran through right to the far post. And it's uh, another free kick for Australia. Emerton making his way into the area. Far post, a very tall player, Emerton. Clayton Zane, the other big man in the team, really. He's also moving to the back post. Free kick for Australia. Rizzo over the ball with the left foot. And Australia's gone down, loose ball. Zane is in there. Gone for a corner. Brazil have scrambled the ball away somehow. And this is great pressure early on from Australia. And great free kicks from Rizzo. Uh, who's uh, here from Liverpool and his first two free kicks really finding the man and causing Brazil all sorts of problems. Brazil perhaps expected to start just a little bit slowly here and Australia taking advantage of that! Oh! Edmonton! It just gets better and better for Brett Edmonton. about the height of Everton and Zane at the far post. And it paid off for the Oli Roos there. What a superb header. Out to the back post. And Everton out jumped this man and thundered it into the back of the net. What a great corner. We talk about finding the man at set pieces. Look at this, and not a challenge in Emerton uh, would be surprised to get that freedom. A great header and a great start for Australia. The quality of those uh, first three dead ball situations is a very good sign for Australia. And Brazil uh, felt this match was going to be the most difficult. And Australia have them on the back foot in these early moments. The Australians down at the moment looks like the number three Colosimo back to his feet, just feeling a little bit sluggish, I'd say, and it's a reflection perhaps on the start that Brazil have made. Milosevic is down also. Brazilians 
arrived in Australia on Wednesday. A long flight from Rio de Janeiro. And if there are any cobwebs to be blown away, Emerton's goal certainly did that. Milosevic doesn't look in good shape, though, really. He's laying flat on his back ever since the collision. Good news, the Oli Roos, he was moved, he was so still on the ground there, I suspected the worst for just a moment. Milosevic is back in action, good news for Australia, as is the start here in the match. Great crowd in the stadium tonight, it's two thirds full at least, and they're seeing a great start by Australia again, surging down the left-hand side is Jacob Burns. Brazilian midfield. Jacob Burns, well familiar with the turf here at Parramatta as club side Sydney United have played all of their home games here this season. Here's Burns. Another throw for Australia. Zane getting away and he's gone down. Well, the size of Zane has caused some early problems for Brazil. There's no hint of a penalty there from the referee, and that's offside. Marco Antonio to strain past the last defender. Marco Antonio plays for Sao Paulo, 19 years of age. The average age of the Brazilians is just under 19. The average age for the Australians is just over 19. Zalem coming in from the left. Roberto will give it straight to Minos. Here's Carl hoping to find Clayton Zane. Australians have been together for just on a week now, so it's very much an untried lineup for them. Familiarity is such an important factor in a winning team, of course, and there's certainly a lack of that within these Australian ranks. This Brazilian team did play a tournament together a month ago. Hamilton going down the right-hand side, winning another corner for Australia. Here we see Rizzo go across to take it, it looks that way. Signal goes up. Nine men in yellow jerseys on the park. Know what Rizzo is signalling about, what will occur on this corner. Another ball to the back post. More pressure on the Brazilian defence. Emerton coming in again. Just for the moment, John, Australia have Brazil under the hammer a bit, particularly from the set pieces. And the set pieces have been a feature so far. Excellent set pieces. Here's another one, another chance for Australia. But Brazil in all sorts of trouble defending because of the quality of the service coming from Rizzo here. Ball to the near post, flicked on across, Zane at the back post, it's still in play. And the goalkeeper for Brazil, Fabio, is furious with his defence because they are just not coping with this Australian onslaught. Another corner to Australia, Fabio waiting on the line. Chip forward to the near post, away, but still unconvincing in defence. Clayton Zane. Is it? Oh, through. Shot comes in straight at the goalkeeper. Brazil break away quickly. Down the line for Marco Antonio. Across covering very quickly, always in control there with Jacob Burns, who came in from the left-hand side. Twelve 
minutes gone. In fact, we're in the 13th minute here. If you've just joined us, Australia have that one goal lead thanks to Brett Emerton. Yoli Roos in the early stages of a medal hunt that Australians are hoping will culminate in September in the year 2000. The long road begins. Very rare, John, for Australia to be entering a major tournament not having to go through a difficult qualifying route, so it's almost a, diff a different preparation from usual this time. Bit of a bonus, isn't it? Yes. And, of course, the pressure at home. I mean, it's great to be playing in front of home crowd and not forgetting the women's Olympic tournament in this respect as well, but uh, high hopes for both the men's and women's team come the Olympics. That's a late challenge yeah. indeed there. Back to Zalem, and he's going to get a yellow card for that, and rightly so for the challenge on Complexus, who stayed down. The referee couldn't have been much closer to have a good look at it, but there was never any doubt. Brazil nearly always win the, or go close to winning the fair play trophies, uh, Paul. That's because they win most of the things, but a sign that Brazil are in trouble is when the cynical fouls start to come out like that. And Australia do have them in all respects on the back foot at the stage. Well, Carl Patterson is standing by on the touchline. Thanks, Paul. Just a quick report on the injury to Danny Milosevic, the goalkeeper. He has, in fact, uh, put a tooth through his lip in that uh, clash with Simon Colosimo. They've patched him up and there is uh, not too much loss of blood, so he'll make it to half-time at least. They'll reassess it then. Back to you, Paul. Thanks, Kyle. Emerton, free on the edge of the penalty area. Australia pushing forward again. Rizzo can't get there. Brazil away. Three men on the left-hand side. It's the number 11, Matazale. Loose ball from him, though. Nick Carl picked it up and Rizzo had it, then lost it. And Brazil are onside, breaking down the right-hand side. Marco Antonio waiting in the centre. What a great saving tackle there. Australia have conceded a corner. But it was Colosimo who recovered in time to avert the danger down the right-hand side. Tizalem, quick corner. This was captain. Tizalem again, the left foot. Throwing it in, awkward, and straight through to Milosevic somewhat fortuitously. You can see the lip of Danny Milosevic in the cut there. He's a tough customer, of course, captain the Australian under-20 side in the World Youth Cup in Malaysia last year. Australia's greatest moment in that tournament it was beating Argentina by four goals to three. South American opponents tonight as well. So the scoreline here would send everyone here going home very happy indeed. Marco Antonio inside. Ferragem lost out to Rizzo. That's this. Zane. Well, he's been brought down again, Clayton Zane. Well, with Archie Thompson and Nick Carl expected to lead the attack, as two very small opponents, and Clayton Zane is a totally different proposition. Tall, gangly, very broad, shields the ball very well indeed. Brazilian defence is struggling to handle them at the moment. Short to Carl. So can't get there. Brazil come away. Marco Antonio. Jacob Burns recovered. Just lost out. Brazil take over. No, they're giving it away to Clayton Zane. He loses out. Roberto. back to Rodrigo, number six, playing the left-back position tonight as Gustavo coming inside. Gustavo battled off the ball by Emerton. 
seem to do a thing wrong at the moment, Brett Everton. Here's Demianos. Morella helping it on quickly, trying to find Rizzo down the right-hand side. This is great work down the right hand side by the right fullback for Brazil, Felipe Albim. Free kick for his side. He's just 19 years of age, plays for Vasco da Gama, another one of the big clubs in Brazil. Ball to the back post, two number sevens going for it, Matizalem. He's gone down under the challenge from Rizzo, and he's won the free kick. <laughs> Brazil's turn now to show what they can do from the set piece. Very much a feature of Brazilian football, of course. Standard leads to number 10, Fernando, who does play for Santos. Just a coincidence there. He goes to take the free kick. Straight at the goal! Milosevic had to be careful of that one. The unexpected from the Brazilian number 10, and Milosevic, but it was too hot for to risk catching it. He just palmed it over the bar. Corner for Brazil. Fernando to take it to the near post. Minos was waiting. Just there. Salem. So we're starting to warm to starting the Starting to warm up, aren't they? I just say, I was thinking that there. These little flicks and touches starting to come. That uh, free kick of Fernando uh, would build the confidence a bit. But Australia on top uh, because simply because Fernando, the number 10, hasn't been in the game a lot, and that's credit to the Australian defence. And also, the other key player hasn't been in is, in is the captain, Ferujum, out of midfield, the number five. And it's interesting, he's matched up against uh, Rizzo there. So uh, for those two reasons, and uh, from a splendid start from Australia, is why Australia dominating so far. Just on the 20-minute mark, Australia still a goal to the good, thanks to Brett Emerton. Uh, coming to meet him, he's got there first, and again, Marco Antonio offside. He's playing the ball after, long after the whistle. And that is a yellow card offence, and that fact is recognised by Simon Mikolev. Marco Antonio. We didn't mention it, but earlier on in a Brazilian attack, he took a huge dive on the edge of the penalty area. Got away with that one, but not this time. A gentlemanly conduct. Come again. He's getting a push in the back every time. Goes near the ball, Nick Carl, having to adjust to a different level here. Nick Carl, he was much unearthed this season, as that's a free kick wasted by Australia. Nick Carl, just 16 years of age. This is the line by this season with ETS Olympic. Rodrigo. Felipe Alvian. That ball from him right through to the goalkeeper quite comfortably. So we were talking before the match about the way all Brazilian teams line up, if you like, with a flat back four and the number five just in front. Just talk us through a little bit about their approach to the game. Well, uh, their two flake players, uh, the attackers, uh, the number two and number six, haven't been in the game as yet, and that's always a good barometer with Brazil when they're playing well. And this man on the ball now, number the number five, the guy who controls things out of the middle, he sweeps in front of the back two. 
and uh, then you have your two wide players of course your number 10 who is then your your key player out of midfield but brazil haven't got going and you must give credit to australia for that so far because they have matched them in all departments haven't allowed them to get into their normal rhythm look at that on the pressure that the boys are putting on the brazilians uh, when they receive the ball is just terrific just not letting them settle at all Jeff charge getting more and more into the game. Time to turn for Matthias Alam. He wasn't really expecting it. He's a very key player for them, the number 11, Matthias uh, The fourth top scorer in the under 17 World Cup, which Brazil won in Egypt. He uh, actually scored a crucial goal to get them there. They only just made it to the finals as the third South American nation and went on to win it. The first time they've won the under 17 World Cup. So to the left hand side yeah, it's chasing hard great crowd in tonight thoroughly enjoying the match so far thoroughly enjoying the score line so far which is in Australia's favour side very much in the earliest of stages of preparation for the Olympics Everton running at the defense great work from Everton he was tripped then but the, the advantage was played there was no real advantage to Australia Brazil forward down the right hand side it's not to get inside Gorilla helping it on Everton that was handball Brazil on with the job quickly Jeff to to Zalem coming inside on the right foot! Just as we were speaking about him earlier, that's more like it from him. A very key player, very dangerous, operates on the left. Equally uh, good with both feet. And slowly but surely, Brazil starting to put it together. A Tuzlum, a player to watch. Came as a real surprise that shot because he's so obviously naturally left footed that he just unleashed a great shot there with the, with the right foot. Right, getting a toe to the ball. But Australia, who dominated possession in the opening. 10 minutes or so have had less than the lion's share in the second 10 minutes of the first half. It's so coming short. That just goes long. It was intended for Emerton, but it reach him and Fernando, the number 10 for Brazil. A little bit deeper to get the ball running through the centre, giving it away though. Damianos, here's Guella. Two teammates from Malaysia in 1997, the under 20 side. Emerton, of course, involved there. Rizzo forward now. Bit of space for him to run into. Back to Emerton down the right hand side. Good cross to the back post. Clayton Zane's here. Great try again, Australia. Zane just bumped slightly by a defender before he took the head on goal. But he's still got a clean contact on the ball. And it was over the bar. Great move, wasn't it? Out of midfield, good ball from Russo, good cross from Emmett. And Australia giving Brazil all sorts of problems in the air, or more correctly, perhaps Zane. Fabio doesn't know whether to come or go, and uh, Brazil lucky to get out of that. I thought there was a push in here as well. There was a number there eight, Eriberto, the number eight, just watching. Coming. There it is. There, that is a push. Staying on the left foot this time, looking in across. The last international match that was played here at Parramatta was in the World Cup qualifying campaign. And Australia played New Zealand. Two nil victory to the Socceroos that night. 
Zielic got them off to a great beginning there with an early goal. Brett Emerton has done the same for the Olympic, the Olympic team here tonight. Goalkeeper just a little bit undersold his goalkeeper there and Clayton Zane went through and it's a yellow card for Clayton Zane for the late challenge of the Brazilian keeper Fabio. Well the header back to the goalkeeper wasn't as accurate as he would have hoped there the defender Felipe Alvim and Clayton Zane was onto it like a shot he there's no doubt about it he was late. Fabio, the Brazilian goalkeeper, is rated as one of their best ever goalkeeping prospects in Brazil. A nation that's renowned for great goalkeepers. So if they want to get a good rap like that, it must be something exceptional. Just 17 years of age, the Brazilian keeper, Fabio. takes over as much as Alem involved more and more back to his captain Virella in quickly and Alberto <laughs> Antonio rolled too long on the ball and the Australians will pressurize and pressurize it was Colosimo there he's already had his shirt ripped Simon Colosimo Free on the right hand side. Coming inside. The ball through to Nick Carl. Nick Carl forward. Here's Rizzo on the right hand side. Still Rizzo waiting for Emerton to join him. Oh, Rizzo's passed his man. He's pulled it back. Great ball across. The far post just over the bar. Superb move from Australia. And it was Damianos who was forward from midfield at the back post there. He'll go across to take the corner. But Rizzo did awfully well to beat his man. The ball to the back post, just a little bit high for Bill Damianos, who did well to keep it down. Well, great work again from Australia down this right-hand side. Grilla, Damianos. Low ball, Zane, Clayton Zane couldn't get there. the South Melbourne midfielder. And there's danger for Australia. Ediberto going through. Ediberto! Great goal! What can you say about that? He was given way too much room and he exploited it to the full. Brazilian flags are out in numbers now, thanks to a stunning strike from Ediberto. Coming in from the right-hand side, the Australian defence backed off somewhat. He was given an awfully long time to line up his shot. You just can't afford to give Brazil that much room, John. What a fabulous goal. You can't, but they're just so beautifully two-footed, aren't they, the Brazilian players? Sadly, and it happens so often in our game, at the other end you had that great move with Rizzo and uh, Damianos. And then the ball goes to the other end and Brazil equalise. A little bit too much room. We've gone back too far into the box there. But still, that's Didi and I, a wonderful strike. A chance for Milosevic with that one. And Australia must start again. Forward very quickly indeed, Carl. Out wide to Burns, playing it across. Oh, it's almost an own goal, is it? Deflection, great save that from Fabio.
Well, the deflected cross there came off the goal scorer, Eriberto. Well, what an extraordinary game it is. He could have scored an own goal less than 60 seconds after scoring an equalising goal. Damien Oss with the corner. A deep one from him. Zane waiting at the back post. He'll pick up a loose ball. He's got Rizzo waiting for it. Still Zane. So demanding the ball a little earlier than that. Grello goes back. Bove. Giving the ball to Marco Antonio Milosevic. Australia calm as they play the ball out. It's a great bloody ball if it can be kept in. Burns just couldn't get there. Federer, Eduberto, Federer, Brazil forward. Still Federer, free man is Luis Claudio, but recovery work from Everton was first class. Great work from Everton. And Corella in strongly in midfield. The match is warming up very nicely. Warming up indeed as the as that early period goes where it's really pretty strict man to man. There's not a lot of space around and gradually there's a little bit more space and both teams enjoying it to make for a splendid spectacle. Brazil that last move uh, their best of the match just showing that they are just starting to warm to the task. Australia to their credit hitting back uh, really nicely with some good good uh, uh, counter attacking moves and uh, a, a splendid match for us now. This is danger for us though. Jem over the ball. Colosimo got there. Brazil in possession. Australia pushing out very quickly. And the flag goes up because there were three or four Brazilians in offside positions there. Well, just over ten minutes to go before half time. Australia won. Brazil won. Great beginning to this three match series. Brazil, of course, very much embarking on their own Olympic journey. It's the only world title that they've never won, of course, an Olympic title. They were beaten by Nigeria in the semi-finals of the 96 Olympics in Atlanta. They were 3-1 up with around 15 minutes to go. Nigeria got two late goals to take the match into extra time, and then their captain, Nwanku Kanu, got a winning goal. A golden goal, in fact, to knock Brazil out. Now Marco Antonio through the middle. Danger here for Australia. Marco Antonio. Well, that was a great saving tackle there. Con Blatzes, with that touch there, was just enough to get the ball away from Marco Antonio. Milosevic got a hand to the ball as well. Corner to Brazil. Fernando takes it right in on the goalkeeper. He might have even gone in the goal if there'd been no one there to get in the way. Luis Claudio from Vasco de Gama putting some pressure there on Danny Milosevic. back. Australia win the free kick finally. Hamilton thought about taking it quickly to Nick Rizzo. Here is Rizzo. Throughout the game the beating of the drums goes on in the background. It's uh, Emerton. Carl onto the left foot. He offends his chances here. He hit it beautifully. And the final shot came in from Damien Oss. But Nick Carl has got a beautiful left foot and he didn't hesitate to chance his arm there. Damien Oss with the final attempt well over the bar. He's had a big game, Damien Oss. Huh? We gave credit to Rizzo for some of those earlier corners. It was, in fact, Damien Oss. 
so from Milosevic as Brazil come forward again. Ruela takes over for Australia. Two Brazilians down on their knees. One Australian as well. Some players injured, but play goes on. Everton doesn't realise that. Everton wins the ball back. It was tucked back, but play goes on, and the ball must surely be put out now. Right into the stand because Alberto, the goal scorer for Brazil, is down. As well as one of the Australians, I think it might be Ralph Bove. Both trains are on. Which we've seen on several occasions already in this first half, quite surprisingly. I guess one of the great benefits of the system we have now in Australia, we've got Glatzis and Milosevic, Damianos, Grella, Emerton, all played for the under-20 side in Malaysia, and now they're taking that, that next stage of their development. Well, it's been the benefit to, uh, to Australia of uh, the Havilland here, if you like, of the president of FIFA of the Youth Championships. It's a, national pro a natural progression from the under-17s into the under-20s, then the under-23 for Olympics, and then, of course, senior football and uh, the players, it's a very natural uh, career path for them. And uh, if we look back at our current national team, the likes of, uh, of Bosnich and Ocon and uh, all those boys who are now part of our senior national team, you go back to 1991 or, or even earlier at under 17, 1991 in Portugal where they did so well, then they stepped up to the Olympics in, uh, in Barcelona where they finished fourth and now they're national team players and that has been the benefit to the developing nations of world football and we are one, one of those of all those youth programs. Well, Carl Patterson has some news from the sideline. Yes, uh, thanks Paul. From ground level, this is a facial injury again after Danny Milosevic had that uh, lip injury. I think in that last tackle, uh, Rafael Bove has suffered some facial injury. And just on the topic of the physical nature of some of the encounters, the uh, Brazilian coach Toninho Barroso has been expressing to his uh, assistants and looking longingly towards the fourth official, not happy with the physical approach of some of the Australian players. No prizes for guessing that uh, Clayton Zane at the moment is not uh, considered a friend of Brazilian football. Paul, back to you. Thanks, Kyle. Well, Clayton Zane's physical presence is causing some problems in the Brazilians' defence and... Well, Bove is going off for Australia. He won't continue. We await to see who his replacement player will be. Steve Labert from Brisbane is a candidate, of course. Draghi Nastevsky from the Melbourne Knights is another possibility. Australia temporarily a man down. It look like Bove will come back on, I'd say. Will return to Australia. It's Grella has stepped into the sweeper's role just temporarily from midfield. It's a little surprising that Australia don't have a substitute ready to go on because Bove was down for probably three or four minutes, and that's a terrible goal kick that was back to Milosevic. A bit longer this time. strong criticism of Clayton Zane, I feel. I don't, I just, they're just having difficulty controlling, but I don't think he's been that late uh, on the goalkeeper, sure. But apart from that, I don't think he's been over-physical in any respect. If anything, the treatment's been the other way. We could go back to that push in the, the penalty area, which should have been a penalty on him. That's a coach who's a little bit concerned, I think, making comments like that. Still no sign of a substitute to come on for Australia. Perhaps they're thinking of Bove coming back on. Well, he was playing so well, it's probably worth uh, gambling a couple of minutes to have him back. In fact, he is. He's getting ready now to come back on, I think. That's why. It is LM forward for Brazil. Everton back for Australia and winning the ball. Bove now returns to the fray. That's 
gone out and it's a goal kick. Bove still not looking 100%. Talking to Ralph Bove during the week, he's so keen to impress here. Certainly the overseas base players like Nick Rizzo and Ralph Bove, Danny Milosevic. They're so keen to come back and represent Australia in the 2000 Olympics. Morella out wide to Burns, down the line, hoping that Carl would run into that gaff, which he didn't. Inside is Demunos, plenty of space for him to move into. Clayton Zane comes short, Vince Grella involved now. Demunos, good ball to Carl. Throw. Ritzo. Still Ritzo. Everton now a chance to get the ball over. Carl turning away, turns straight into trouble. The Brazilian Fernando. Roberto. Carl Patterson has some more news from the touchline. Thanks, Paul. Just more news on that uh, Rafael Bova injury. He took a knock to the cheek, a small cut inside his mouth. But the main problem is he's quite groggy. I was there in the tunnel and he just uh, didn't know where he was for a little while. They've put him back out and if he gets through to half-time, the chances are uh, a good break at half-time will clear his head and he'll continue. But uh, a bit of a, a knock to the head and uh, he was seeing stars there for a while. Back to you, Paul. He's back on the park now in his position. He's moving fairly freely, so hopefully Ralph Bove is OK. Less than a minute to go until half-time. Uh, there have been a number of stoppages in play in the first half, so perhaps there's at least three or four minutes before the whistle will be blown. Daniel Barroso, the Brazilian coach. Salem switching play. Felipe Albim on the right-hand side, taking on his man. Burns just pressured him off the ball. Great work from Burns, but he undid all the good work by giving the ball away. Felipe Alvim again. Ball in, straight through to the goalkeeper. Dove. Colosimo. See the collar on Simon Colosimo has been well and truly manhandled. Bove has been down injured, so Australians have felt the effects of the Brazilian hard play, if you like, as well. There's clear evidence for that. Damianos. Nick Carl. Quiet first half. First international game. It's a He's been very busy indeed. Demianos also in good touch. And to the area, Zane. Now, which way will it go? There was no free kick at all. And another tangle with Clayton Zane on the edge of the penalty area. And it's not for the first time, almost identical circumstances to an earlier one. Well, the question was, if you couldn't get on the replay, whether there was a, a foul by Zane first. There certainly was by uh, uh, the Brazilian player, and uh, that should have been a penalty. Zane turning them very well, having a big game played for Zane. It's one thing about Brazilian uh, defenders, they are cool, uh, calm and collected, but they have been really put off their game, particularly by Zane this evening. And about, uh, while Simon Colosimo, the Carlton player, got a yellow card there for that challenge. Salem just coming inside. Blatsis with him all the way, winning the ball back. Great work from Con Blatsis. Emerton, tidy possession keeping by Australia, Bove. Australia, 
the left hand side. Colosimo was fouled surely. And a yellow card. This is retired to the number eight, Edoberto. And it's the third yellow card to a Brazilian. Well, he took Colosimo out there with a challenge more in keeping with rugby league, which they play here occasionally. No question, was there? Again, it's a sign Brazilians are upset when they start to foul like that. And uh, credit to Australia, that's been the story of this first half. They've had very good dead ball situations. This is a very vital one right up coming up to half time. To get ahead here would be quite goal for Australia. So over the ball, that left foot of his. Emerton and Zane at the back post. Ball comes in! Well, just for a moment, there was a free header in the centre to Colosimo. Zane was making his way in at the back post. There's an Australian man free there. Colosimo couldn't get to the ball. And the end it came off one of the other Australians. And another quality dead ball move by Australia. Damianos and uh, Russo have been superb in this first half. In, uh, particularly in the dead ball uh, delivery of the passes that they've put in. They've been, uh, along with Grilla in midfield, quite outstanding. Roberto, the goal scorer for Brazil. Memorable effort from him, and we're almost into 49 minutes for this first half, which gives you an indication that it's been a tough battle so far between these young men. Remember, the average age for both teams is somewhere around 19. Corner for Brazil. Australia must hang on to go in level at half time, and it was easy clearance away. You can see the crowd on the far side there. It's almost a full stadium here now at Parramatta. Terrific atmosphere. Great mix of Australian supporters and Brazilian supporters, both equally noisy. This Hollywood squad, the four. These matches have played just two games together. Friendlies against South Africa. Won one and lost one. That is it. So it's very much a new untried 11 that's on the park. And they've accounted for themselves very well indeed in this first 45 minutes while we been anticipating the visit of Brazil for an awfully long time now and it's certainly been worth the wait. Brett Emerton opened the scoring for the Olly Roos very early on in the game. It was very much Australia's match for the first 10 or 15 minutes or so before Edoberto found a response for Brazil in the 31st minute. A marvellous strike from him outside the area with the left foot. At times it's been quite a physical first half, a number of players requiring treatment. Clayton Zane certainly causing problems for Brazil in attack with his height and weight. But the crowd here at Parramatta have thoroughly enjoyed the first 45 minutes. And at the break it's Australia 1, Brazil 1. We'll take a short break and be back with more in just a moment. Welcome back to the Parramatta Stadium where the occasion is big and very, very exciting indeed. Australia versus Brazil in the Olly Roo Challenge. It's 1-1 at the break and I can tell you it's no friendly. The Australians, uh, of course, going ahead uh, early in the game and then uh, the Brazilians hitting back uh, in a very, very dazzling display of football. Johnny Warren, what did you think of it? Terrific, uh, terrific spectacle first half. I did feel Australia had a big chance to win tonight because Brazil will be at their most vulnerable. But that is to deny that Australia played very, very well. I, I believe they are ahead on points, if you like, if not on the scoreboard. What did you think, Nick? 
I echo Johnny sentiments. So I, I think Australia took the game to the Brazilians early on, and if someone walked into the ground 15, 20 minutes into the first half, Les, I think they would have thought that the Brazilian side was a team in yellow, yet it was the Australians. Absolutely. Now, what was the, what was the reason for that? The, the Brazilians, well, you could say they're uh, in new territory, not acclimatised or whatever, but they really looked very, very frustrated for, uh, what I would say, half hour of the first half. I think if you notice the first couple of minutes, the Brazilians tried to keep it, push it around, the Australians stayed back, and I think that was a false sense of security. Then when the Australians got in possession, it was quick, it was precise, it was straight for goal, and we created the chances. I think we had three chances in the opening four minutes, and that's where we got the first goal. I think, I think it just Australia's played so well, they just haven't allowed them space. They've been excellent, in, particularly in midfield, Rizzo, Damiano, Scrella. Emerton, uh, Burns on the other side, but three indicators of Brazil if they're in, or four. Uh, the, the number five has to be dominant, he hasn't been. Number ten has to be active, he hasn't been. The two fullbacks overlapping, they haven't been. And giving away yellow cards. So they are signs that everything is not right with Brazil. That's right. The, uh, the little blonde guy, Marco Antonio, uh, very frustrated. Uh, the, the little striker, number nine, Marco Antonio, uh, not managing much at all. No, and Mat uh, Mat Matuzalem hasn't been in the game either. No, but no. again, that is to deny that Australia had played an excellent game of football in the first half. Safe at the back, uh, the, the attacks out of midfield and on the flanks have been excellent. Zane up front causing them all sorts of problems, being fouled on so many occasions. And it's been a great first half for Australia. All right, John, let's have a look at some of the highlights from the first half. The Australians, of course, uh, hitting early with that goal from Emerton. And absolutely burying the header. And what a great start. Five minutes and 40 seconds, 1-0 to Australia in front of a huge crowd. And I think that a lot of the people disbelieved Australia was ahead so early. And there's one of the features of Australia's first half performance has been the quality of the dead balls. So free kicks and the corner kicks, Damianos and, uh, and uh, Rizzo. Rizzo, yeah. Rizzo's having a great game. He was seen from another angle, gets in front of his defender, Rodrigo and gives uh, Fabio, the keeper, absolutely no chance whatsoever. OK. Well, we'll have a look at the Brazilian goal as well, which was another, which was a, another beauty. But it came as after uh, Australia was pressing really hard. There was a brilliant volley from uh, Damianos, and they caught us on the break. They did. They caught us on the break, and um, Heriberto took the, collected the ball on the right, came in field, and what was important as well was um, the number nine, Marco Antonio's run. He took Bovey across, had him in doubt, thus cutting across and with his left, burying the ball and having the scoreline 1-1 instead of Australia leading 2-0. John, that's something we have to watch, isn't it? Because when, when the Brazilians break, they break very quickly and, and they're explosive. And, and at that occasion, I thought we defended badly too. We retreated too deep in, into our own penalty box. But they, when they had the opportunity, they take it. That was, it was a great strike. I mean, what I like also about the game, guys, is, uh, is that this is no friendly. I mean, somebody in the, in the papers described it as a friendly. I mean, we said at the beginning of the program that it's a three-match series for a trophy. There's nothing friendly about this game, is it? We always say the one thing not to do against Brazil is score against them because it upsets them and, and uh, really gets them going. I, th I think the boys knew they were in for a match when, for a big game when uh, Colosimo went down injured and the ball, the Australian boys kicked the ball out, the Brazilians took the throw and they threw it back to their own men rather than to do the right thing and give it back to us. So I think Australia knew that they were in for a, for a hard night. They were under, under a lot of pressure. When we return, it'll be the second half of Australia versus Brazil. As a lead up to Sydney 2000, Australia takes on Brazil in the second match of the Oli Roo Challenge. With our under 23s preparing for a home turf goal, Brazil has its sights set on the prize which has always eluded them. Watch the Olympians of tomorrow battling it out 9 30 Tuesday.
welcome back to the Fairmount Stadium. It's still half time here in the match between Australia and Brazil. Remember, two more games to come in this series. The next one on Tuesday night at the Heinmar Stadium in Adelaide. Please get yourselves out, out there because you're going to have a wonderful time. And of course, at the WACA, the, uh, the final match in the series next Saturday evening. And I might tell you, Nick, that if it stays at 1 1, that means the last game will be the deciding game of the series. It will indeed, and I think that's what. Um that's what everyone wants to see, the last match to be the decisive match of the series. All right, Nick, let's have a look at the Brazilian goal, which we recalled was a beauty, uh, by um, Heriberto. Uh, Australians caught on the break. Yeah, we just saw Heriberto come across from the right-hand side. We don't see. Here it is from, from a better angle. He comes across, cuts in field, and we see the top of our screen, Marco Antonio, take the sweeper away. And what a clinical finish as well from Heriberto. Gave Milosevic no chance whatsoever. Here John? again, Bovo going across. Yeah, beautiful strike. I mean, we can look at the defence, the defending angle, for, but a, a great strike, swerving away from the keeper. And uh, there are the stats, of course, which even though Brazil, uh, not in top form as we know Brazil, still have more possession of the ball. I don't know who had the other 1% there, but uh, <laughs> Australia on the computer, the computer has hidden it. Shots on goal, 8-5 to five though, Nick. Yeah, and I think that's the important issue. Australia only had the ball for 45% of the first half, but they certainly had eight shots on goal. And I think Ralph Blake will be very happy with that. All right. Well, as you can probably hear from the noise, the teams are coming out for the second half. Nick, how should the Australians approach this second half now? Raul Blanco. I don't think he should change anything. I think he should continue to take the game to the Brazilians. It's worked in the first half. They had the eight shots, as we saw. They scored an early goal and put the Brazilians under a mountain of pressure. All right, Nick, thanks a lot. Let's go quickly to Carl Patterson on the sidelines. Thank you, Les. Well, we have confirmation of just one change for Brazil. The number nine, Marco Antonio, will be coming off, replaced by number 17, Edu. No changes for the Oli Roos. There was some concern that young Nick Carl, just 16, of course, was a little bit overawed by the, the occasion. He'll get more of a chance in the second half, but maybe look to Michael Kersija coming into the game if Nick Carl can't get himself into proceedings. Let's now go to the second half. Of course, it is 1-1 here at the Parramatta Stadium. If you've just joined us, let's pick up that second half. Thanks, Kyle. Both sets of players are on the park and ready to begin the second 45 minutes. And if it's as good as the first, we're in for a, a rip-roaring time here on SBS. Well, these two nations have played each other seven times in international football. But just looking interestingly at one other one occasion, that under-17 level in 1995, Brazil beat Australia by three goals to one in Ecuador. It was the quarter-final of the 1995 World Cup and that is the only time that Australia have scored a goal apart from tonight against Brazil. Brazil starting very quickly here. Luis Claudio across and Roberto over the bar. Well, Australia almost caught napping early on in the second half by Brazil. Fernando couldn't get there, it was just toe poked away. And it was blazed over the bar by Edoberto, the goal scorer. Nick Rizzo. So just quickly on that point about the only goal being scored against Brazil, only Brett Emerton and Daniel Alsop was the player who scored that goal in the Under-17 World Cup against Brazil. Two players, the only two Australians ever to find the back of the net against the champions yeah, it's such a good first half for Australia as Carl mentioned Brazil have made one change number 17 they do the Sao Paulo striker has come on in place of Marco Antonio to note too that the number seven who's just going for that ball there just flicking it on Luis Claudio is pushing up a lot more already in this second half than he was in the first Ralph Bove in possession obviously his head has cleared after that clash in the first half Burns just keeping the ball in back to Colosimo Blatsis. 
Emerton. Not going anywhere particularly, but and three on the left-hand side now. It's Bove to Blatzis again. Still marking the spaces very well indeed. Clayton Zane. Well, the flag has gone up against Clayton Zane there. I don't think it was for offside, so perhaps the linesman saw some kind of push from the big striker. Fernando hardly saw him in the first half. Here he is, cutting inside. That is Jem. Ball through the centre. Oh, it surely is offside. Eriberto there, right in the centre. Well, not watching there, Jacob Burns. Australia giving possession away rather cheaply. That's something they can't afford to do against the Brazilians. Sometimes it can take an awfully long time before you get the ball back. The back heel, Eriberto, challenged by Rizzo. Carl getting more involved. Good to see. Damianos. Dizelem through ball. Offside. Pace there, though, of Luis Claudio. And what a pass. Matuzel, and that's better from him. Doesn't give us an exact picture. It's when the ball is passed to him, whether he's in an offside position. Australia, of course, has three overseas-based players on the park. The goalkeeper, Milosevic, Ralph Bove in defence, Nick so in midfield, but two others did return back for the series. Harry Kuehl of Leeds, the big draw card. So many people were hoping that he would be here, of course, and what a difference he would make to this Australian side if Kuehl was involved down the left-hand side. And also Ante Seric, who plays for Hype Hedrick Split in Croatia. This club refused to release him. And well, going through. Chance hit for Australia. Nick Carl, he's onside! Well, he's got a marvellous left foot, Nick Carl, and we almost saw it there. He took the ball beautifully on the run. A difficult angle, but he went for power and just over the bar. Grella. Astutely from midfield, great little touch inside there. Carl shot about a metre over the bar. Well, if he wasn't involved in the first half, he certainly has been in the second. Fernando, solid challenge that from Colosimo. Zane holding the play up and tripped. Simon Mikulev quickly moving. To Zalem back. Well, that's why that was a that was a bad challenge there by the Brazilian number 11. He's a little bit lucky not to get a yellow card for that, and if he did, he'd be sent off because he's already had one in the first half. Zane, a difficult shot to take first time. Flags up for something. It's just been seen by the referee, and it was offside. Brazil, uh, minus all of their overseas-based players. The most famous, of course, is Den Yilson, the 19-year-old, the world's most expensive player. What a treat it would be to see him here at Parramatta Stadium. Not tonight. Lexus in defence for the Oli Roos. Emerton. Cutting inside. Tizalem takes over for Brazil. Matazala through the centre. Thoughtful pass from him for the run from Fernando. Brazil have started the second half well. Matazala again on the left foot. Milosevic spinning the ball with his hands. Matazala saw him fire one in in the first half with the right foot. Here's one off the left foot. Ball, surely the goalkeepers. It's a foul. Uh, 
lot also the Brazilian coach. Back to Colossimo. Side to Deminos. It was touched on. Carl made good of a bad ball there. Loose ball. Carl takes over. Back to Grella. Carl then again doing well despite the nice advantage that the Brazilian head. Carl came away with the ball. Carl involved again. Emerton through the centre. Still Emerton. Shots off just past the post for Fred Everton. Well, he had to fight for the opportunity all the way through a couple of challenges there and just toe poked it forward. Perhaps missing by a larger margin than we thought. Well, what a year, what a season. Just named captain of the Sydney 2000 team, and that many people believe that is a better role for him coming through the middle. He is so strong on the ball and as well as the skill. And of course, with this team, he's playing wider, but with his club Olympic, he's playing with great success in recent weeks, playing through the middle in situations like that and like this. Here he comes again on the gallop. Everton on the left. Oh, it's, up. it's the post. Brazil can't contain Everton. Outstanding work from him. Still Australia on the attack. Emerton again. The blood must be pumping through his veins. He's on fire so much. Brazil coming away with the ball now. Great ball. Just going through to there to Luis Cardio. The match is hot. There's no doubt about that. There is real spice in this one. Both sides want it badly. Fernando, a bit so. Fernando again. The ball through, and Colosimo will get there, and it will run out quite comfortably. Colosimo just letting Luis Claudio know that he doesn't appreciate like challenges like that when the ball's gone over the line already. No hard feelings between the two players. But Brett Emerton is the man of the moment for Australia without a doubt. That shot just smashing into the post. And Carl, still Carl, turning away onto that left foot of his. Zane touched off to Burns. Sharp work from the Oli Ruse. Burns the switch to Emerton. Still Emerton now, waiting for some movement. That's a good ball. Zane's in behind the defence here. players waiting in the centre, pulled back. But cut out by Rodrigo. Here is the earlier shot from Everton. Beat the defence all on his own, beat the goalkeeper. But not quite good enough just yet. Not a bad first game for captain of Australia. He's <laughs> doing yeah, fairly well, isn't he? Well, substitutions will be made here for Australia. It's across to Carl Patterson for all the details. Yeah, thanks, Paul. A double change by Raul Blanco. Nick Carl, as we uh, forecast, coming off to be replaced by Michael Pesija. In the midfield, Bill Damianos will make way for young Jason Kalina. And the instructions to Kalina are that the Australians have to sit on the ball more, hold the ball, a lot more running off the ball. Let's keep possession as the first priority. And as I speak, about four Brazilian players warming up, so they'll be making some changes, I think, in the very near future. Back to you, Paul. Michael Procedure, of course, very much a part of Australia's campaign in Malaysia in the World Youth Cup, so he's got more international experience than the man he replaced, Nick Carl. But so, deep ball, Zane just about got there. But Nick Carl certainly impressed greatly in the second half. Yes, much more involved, wasn't he? It was a quiet first half, which is understandable. It's the boy's 16 years of age. A uh, big occasion, uh, but uh, in the second half showed the touches, which he's rapidly developing a reputation for with Sydney Olympic in the Ericsson Cup. Brazil started this second half very strongly, but Australia have well and truly taken control of the match now in the last 10 minutes or so. And it's Rizzo with the corner, the in-swinger. 
be another corner off the head of Edoberto. Surely that's a corner, according to the referee. Diogo short with the goal kick. You see Alvim cross. Rodrigo. Gustavo outside him. Zalem coming inside. So sharp with those turns. A little chip onto the left foot. Great ball from him. Blatzis will swallow that one up though. Gustavo just showing too much ball to Con Blatzis. He's been in superb form for South Melbourne in the Ericsson Cup. Ericsson Cup, of course, continuing tomorrow with some great games. In the countdown to the top six, just four rounds remaining. Clubs, of course, having to do without their Olympic players. So, I guess a bit more than most, with three players in the squad. Four now, counting Michael Casija, who was a late inclusion. Burns for Australia. And so, well, so much pushing and shoving going on. Get no room on the ball at all. You talk about the Brazilian skill and technique, sometimes you forget how well they close down and tackle. Raul Blanco in the centre there. David Mitchell on Raul Blanco's left. Coach of Sydney United involved in this series. Out of the Education, if you like, for the local coaches at international level. Nick Theodorakopoulos has been involved with the Olympic side. Marco Kalina was involved with the under-20 side in Malaysia. Now it's David Mitchell's turn. Brazil trying to make a change. New time for Felipe Alvim. Alberto takes over. Felipe Alvim again. They do the substitute, the ball run, and it's an Australian throw. Rob Blanco, the Australian team coach, was just a little bit hesitant to set the series initially against Brazil because it's such a stern test for his untried team but decided to go ahead with it and wisely so it's a great hit out for the boys against the potentially the world's best there's a number of players missing from this Brazilian side but you would hardly know the procedure for Australia with the cross good cross there well there was a free man in Vince Grilla making his way into the area Ball didn't get to him. Felipe Alvim down the line. Edoberto moving inside. They do on the ball. Pushed in the back. Quite clearly as well. Colosimo. a new shirt at half time Simon Colossimo one with a collar still the drums keep going at Parramatta free kick to Brazil onto the left foot of Matuzalem will him get in Good goal kick that was in the Brazilian captain 17 years of age Captain the under-17 World Championship side. Now captain here. It's quite extraordinary. 17 and captain of an Olympic team. But it's a Zane. Burns. Instructions from Raul Blanco very much to keep possession and play more and more. The inclusion of Jason Kalina. Just after half-time, play a major part in that. He's a 
fine ball player, fine passer of the ball. To get involved in the game. It's a little ball in behind the defence for Emerton to chase. He's got past his man, but he fouled him in the process. John, the game is locked at one all. It's very much anyone's match at this stage. Yes, I think I we need to win this one. We meaning Australia, of course, to, the, to win this one in view of the series. But I think Brazil are at their most vulnerable tonight. They are starting to tire a little bit more than Australia. I would expect some changes for Brazil. They've got to freshen their team up because uh, Australia have had the better of the second half. Particularly that run by uh, Emmett and then even though it ended in the foul, just uh, indicated how much stronger and sharper Australia are in this match than uh, the Brazilians have been. <laughs> One of the Brazilians is down, perhaps with a bit of crap. I mean, the Aussie boys have travelled as well, the likes of Rizzo and uh, Milosevic, Bove. But the trip from Rio here is 24 hours. It's 11 hour time difference. And uh, for those people that have traveled, it, is, it, it does take a long time to adjust. And that's uh, the reason that I'm giving the Brazil at their most vulnerable tonight. But of course, all comments in that area do deny what's been a, a splendid performance from Australia. Many impressive uh, performers. None more so than the skipper. Emerton. Well, the signal from the Brazilian trainer is fairly clear. Luis Claudio won't continue on in the game. All the Brazilian substitutes are walking up behind 